Hi students, this is Mrs. Erdman. I miss you guys so much. Um, I wish I could see all of you right now. I did get to see a few of you over Skype this week, um, but hopefully I'll get to see you soon. But who knows, it could be another five weeks for me here in the hospital, so we'll see. Um, I have been in this little room now for 38 days. Yeah, 38 days, which if you can imagine being grounded in your bedroom for 38 days. I mean, yeah, I have people coming and going, but still to just be in a room uh, gets to be a little exhausting. Um, I, miss, I miss being home. I miss seeing you guys um, coming, coming to school and all of that, but I am at the same time so thankful to be here um, at this point. So I did want to give you start with a little bit of an update of how I'm doing, how the boys are doing. Um, so Steve wanted to show my baby belly. So, and this is my belly view from the side. Um, and in case you guys are wondering, since the twins now are pretty much big enough to not move a whole lot, Elijah is sitting on top of his brother Owen. Um, his head is over here and his little butt <laughs> is about over here. And then underneath, Owen's head is down here and then his back and his legs go up here. So they're kind of sitting crisscrossed um, in my belly and they've been that way for about three weeks now. So they'll probably stay in those positions, but yeah, so a few more weeks, I'll be much bigger than this, but <laughs> I am three days away from being 29 weeks um, pregnant. And I got here to the hospital when I was 23 weeks along. And at 23 weeks gestation, a baby in the, in the womb, a little science <laughs> biology lesson, um, they are, they can survive. There is a chance of survival outside of the womb at 23 weeks, um, but the survival rate is very low. Um, so when I was admitted at 23 weeks, there was a lot of anxiety um, and I didn't know how far along I would get. Um, but now at 29 weeks, the boys have a 90% or higher rate of survival if they're born at this point, which is amazing and such a relief. Um, so I did want to just mention and just and thank you all for your prayers and your thoughts because it has made such a huge difference for me. Um, when we went down to Denver to have the laser treatment, which we were not actually able to do, um, not to go into huge detail, but my water actually did break two days later. And typically what happens um, if a, a woman, a pregnant woman's water is to break, the typical thing that happens to the body is that you go into labor typically within 72 hours. Um, so when that happened to us in Denver, I really thought that that was the end um, or the beginning of the end, essentially. Um, but God has bigger plans and who knew that I'd still be here today, still have these babies in my tummy. Um, so it really is a miracle. Uh, there are a couple other miracles that have occurred thanks to your prayers. Um, one thing is that the symptoms of the twin to twin transfusion syndrome in the two boys have all but seemingly disappeared over, over the past uh, several weeks. Um, their Dopplers, th and Dopplers, when I say Dopplers, I, I mean their blood flow um, through their umbilical cords, through their brains, through their bodies has um, become stable and normal. Um, 
and that's huge. Uh, that actually only typically happens, my doctor said, in 30% of women who are not able to have the laser treatment. Um, but have to do something alternative, like an amnio reduction, which is what I had instead. So um, that, that is a huge miracle as well. And just the fact, again, that I am still here, still growing these babies um, at 29 weeks is a huge blessing. So thank you for your continued prayers. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit, well, I've been meaning to record myself <laughs> for a chapel um, for a long time. And I have a million things that honestly I could talk to you guys about. But the one thing that keeps coming to the top of my mind is this expectation, this waiting that we have during the Advent season, during this, this time before Christmas where we are we're waiting for the birth of our Savior and I think about that and and I think about the situation that I'm in right now where I'm literally sitting here waiting <laughs> um, instead of waiting for Christmas um, I'm waiting for my own two sons to be born um, and all the things that will come with that you know and I know a lot of you right now are excited for Christmas. I mean, who is not excited for Christmas once you get to this point in the year? Um, and we all have different expectations of what we want this holiday season to be or what, what things we want to do to get in the mood of Christmas. Um, and as far as expectations go, at least with this pregnancy, I started off when I found out I was having twins with the expectations and um, the concerns of how are we going to even raise twins? How are we going to handle twins? Um, some other thoughts that I had were now we're going to need a bigger car <laughs> now that we're having twins. How are we going to afford a bigger car? How are we going to afford a bigger house? Um, how will we pay for all the diapers? You know, my, my mind shift, um, my, my mind shifted from those kind of worldly concerns um, to when we found out about the TTS, um, my mind shifted to will they ever see my face as their mother? Will they ever know that I love them as their mother or Jared as their father? Um, I had concerns of will they feel pain um, if, if they're born and there's nothing we can do? Um, will, will I get to be a parent to these two boys? Um, and then will they, will they ever know my love for them as a mother? So my concerns shifted from these worldly things that now to me are not even important at all. <laughs> It'll all work out to, I just want to, for them to live, um, to love them and to be able to raise them and, and see them grow as boys and young men. Um, and then that made me think of, you know, back, back to the whole Christmas season thing and our expectations waiting for the Lord and waiting for the birth of our Savior. And, um, you know, this has been a very, a very difficult experience for me. Um, it's been a very eye-opening experience for me um, because it's in a way it's a near-death experience for me really and some of you have had those experiences in your lives too um, not not all of you yet have had an experience like this but some of you have you you have pondered 
um, the importance of just having your mom or your brother or sister or your child alive, you know, and, and then that's enough. That's all that you could ever want at that point um, for them to be with you and you to be with them. Um, and when you have those, when you have that experience, although it seems like a trial, it really is a blessing because it really does make you focus on what's really important. And I think that those of us that have gone through an experience like this, we have a huge responsibility, um, more so in our own lives, than to go out and preach to people. Well, you make sure you're, <laughs> you make sure you're living your life, and and make sure you know YOLO or whatever, and make sure that you're spending time with family and friends. But until you go through a situation like this, um, it's just really hard to think like that. So this experience for me has given me a complete mind shift on my life and what the priorities in my life should be. And that's my responsibility. My responsibility is to be positively changed by this. And so now my expectations going into the Christmas season are more along the lines of when, when am I going to see the Lord's miracles again in my life? I've already seen so many miracles um, that have happened over the past few months that now I anticipate God's goodness. When, when and how am I going to see God's goodness? Um, am I living my life in a way that's befitting to entering the kingdom of God and dwelling there with Him someday? Um, and this expectation of that I will see God someday, I will be with Him, and that hopefully my loved ones will also be with Him, and these become my, my priorities and my expectations. Um, you know, whereas if none of this would have happened to me, right now I would be focused on Okay, for one thing, getting to the Concordia Christmas concert this weekend because that's one of my favorite things to do and a tradition. Christmas cards, Christmas cookies, Christmas gifts, all of those things. And instead, I am focused on um, just being thankful for God and hope in my life, for what He's done for my sons and um, my family and I am focused on the love of the Lord um, and just being with family and being able to to see my husband once a day or every other day you know to see my my son once a day or every other day um, and so those things become really the important things and and again, without this experience, would that have been, would my eyes have been opened to this? I'm not necessarily sure. I don't know. Um, so I, I am grateful. Um, so like I said, <laughs> there's a lot of other things that I could talk about in, um, for a chapel for you. and and maybe someday soon or in the near future I will be able to share some of those with you in a chapel where I'm actually in the uh, <laughs> building with you guys. Um, but I just want to leave you guys with, with uh, I mean, we kind of think of it as a it's kind of an afterthought now, you know, you, you hear Jesus is the reason for the season. Okay, you know, we've all heard this and it goes in one ear and it goes out the other. And we forget that we are so fragile. Um, I, I'm not going to go into detail, but I know many people right now who are suffering um, around me in this hospital and um, some in nearby areas that are, no, they're going to die. 
or know that their loved one or that their child is probably going to die. And I mean, I pray for those people deeply every day. And I think to myself, you know, as, as bad as my situation is, or I can get down on my situation, I, I am really, really, truly very, very blessed. And, um, but as, as Christians, we're blessed because we know where we're going when we die. We know that we are going to live with our God in this beautiful heavenly place that we cannot fathom for all eternity. And that's where our joy should come from at Christmas time because God came as a little baby for us. And if he didn't do that, we wouldn't have that joy. We wouldn't have that hope here in this hospital or anywhere else that we will be reunited again or that we will be happy again. So I'll just end with that. And I cannot say for certain if I will be at the benefit that um, is going to be held for us before the middle school Christmas concert on December 16th. I'm kind of anticipating I'll still be here, which would be good. <laughs> um, but my husband, my son, my family and friends will be coming to Oak Grove um, to take, take part in the benefit and, and stay for the concert. And I wish I could see you middle schoolers sing in your concert. Um, so I'll have to get a recording of that. Um, but God bless you all. Merry Christmas. And I hope to see you all at some point. Um, who knows when that will be, but hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> so thank you. Take care.